Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson here on the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to find your very first product to sell on Amazon in 2021. My guest today is the host of the most listened to podcast for Amazon sellers in the world. He has launched over 400 products single-handedly as an Amazon selling consultant. Please help me in welcoming the director of training at Helium 10, Bradley Sutton. Hello, hello everybody, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. We're grateful to have you and grateful for your time. So why don't you start us off today with uh, a little bit of an intro into what new sellers should be doing on Amazon in 2021. Obviously, there's not gonna be anything monumental that's changing over the years, but each year there's some small nuances and things we should be looking out for, things we shouldn't be doing anymore. Could you spend a little time talking about what we should be doing? Say, I'm a new seller, I'm coming to you. Hey, Bradley, how do I launch my first product on Amazon this year? How do I pick it? One of the things um, I'm going to show you guys actually what I literally am in the process of doing as of three, four weeks ago. Um, and it's very similar to the process that we did on Project X where we, we found a couple of products that 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 were, got us good traction. And um, it's like for the first product, you know, you, you shouldn't be looking to, to try and make a million dollars in your first product. Now, if you're already a millionaire and, and you can sink $200,000 or $100,000 in this humongous campaign and all this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and try and knock one out of the park on your first try. And even if you fail, you're still rich, you know, but for the most of us, regular people, like I say, go small first um, and, and, and do a low barrier barrier of entry and something where, where you're not going to take a, a loss on it. And in my opinion, there is no failure on your first product. I know so many people might never, ever sell on Amazon because they're so scared about failing on their first product. But the reason why I say there's no failure, maybe you don't make money on your first product, but that to me is not a failure because as you yourself, you know, know, Paul, like your first product, you learn so much about the process, about yes, negotiating absolutely. with suppliers, about, mm. about the shipping, you know, about dealing with Amazon and you know, FBA. Like there is no negative that could ever come out of your first, uh, your first uh, product. 100%. I agree. Yeah. So um, one thing that I, I have been pushing for almost a year now is use the, you know, use the helium 10 tools, of course, to find products. But what happens is sometimes you might find something and you think that it maybe now is, is too late. And so this is a true story. Four weeks ago or five weeks ago, I was preparing this webinar. I'm not sure if you saw this, but it was the one that I did on product research. Like we do it once a year. And as I was preparing the slides, like that one is not like this where it's a live demo. I was, I was actually preparing slides. It's like, you know what? I want to show people the process of how we found the egg holder that we did okay. on project X. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to like retrace my steps. I'm going to show you guys what happened, but it's a great way for finding your first product. Great. That's awesome. What I did was I was like, all right, guys, you know, I had gone in, in black box and, and I'm sure Paul, you have videos on, on how to do this. And, and then we had, we had found here in the keywords, like maybe I was looking for a keyword that, that had uh, you know like three thousand searches and and not many reviews, et cetera, mm. et cetera. And basically, we ended up on egg holder. And, and I'm retracing one year ago steps. Uh, but at the same time, I was trying to do this. I was trying to do this. Well, let me change the address here. I was trying to do this um, last week. So I said, all right, let's go to egg holder, right? And, and actually, right now, this is almost the same as what you would have seen um a year ago where you see what plastic ones right you see some spiral ones here and and it seems like it might be too late to get into this right look, look at this you got four thousand reviews 500 reviews 500 reviews right. so everything was was good so far so i was like yeah this is this is good stuff we see metal ones metal ones plastic ones all right so this is so far so good this is exactly what we saw last year so then i was like all right what we did was we went on Etsy and Pinterest to kind of see are there are there other trends you know happening on 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 Amazon or on on off of Amazon I should mm -hmm. say. So when we went to Pinterest, for example, um, and I looked at egg holder, okay, now if this is this was different. All right, so a year ago. What I saw here, and this is what I was trying to recreate when I was trying to make some slides for this uh, webinar, was <clears throat> I saw a page full of stuff like this right here. This 
this wooden egg holder. <clears throat> mm, and I was rustic, like, wait, yeah, yeah that, that's interesting. You know, this is the same keyword, egg holder, in Amazon, but then the results are completely different. And then when I went to Etsy, it was also similar where last year it was all like these wooden egg holders, you know, but here, this is completely different than last year. What we see now is a new trend of look at these like these like little shelves uh, they have like chicken wire. We see that one right there here. Here's like a shelf and my screen just went dead here. What just happened? Sure. So you're using these external websites and even I think the point you're trying to make is year after year, even if you might think it's too late in the market, maybe you think you missed out. Oh, I could have done a year ago, but sure, certainly I can't do it now. You're getting these new proof of concepts and these new yep. proven products from different places that maybe aren't on Amazon. But the, the cool thing about Etsy, for instance, you actually get to see the number of sell, sales that that storefront sure. has made, right? You actually yep. know that these are being purchased. It's awesome. Absolutely. Uh, and, and that's what that's what the beauty about this. And the reason why I specifically am showing people pits, uh, uh, Pinterest and Etsy is because these are usually four to six months ahead of Amazon. And we saw this last yes. year. So last year, there was no wooden egg holders. And that's why we made one that looks like this, because we saw it all over uh, Etsy and Pinterest. And now there's just like a million people who have wooden egg holders on, on Amazon. So the reason why Pinterest and Etsy is, is kind of ahead of the game is because when we talk about Amazon, if there's a new trend, how long does it take to get done? You know, all right, let me, let me get some samples. Let me send it to China. Um, let me order it. I mean, that whole process is like, could be four months, five sure, months, you know, from the, from the proof, from the time of concept, right? To the actual time you can get products on Amazon. It could take four to five months if you act on it like immediately. On Pinterest, first of all, that's ideas. You have an idea, you just find an image, you put it there, like it's there the same day. So like it gets trends faster. Even if, if you're a seller on Etsy and you notice something is trending, Etsy means like usually handmade. Mm -hmm. So you've got a, your garage, you're making this stuff in your garage. You, you, you see an idea in two days, you've got a product ready to sell. So uh, Etsy and Pinterest is always, almost always like four to six months ahead of Amazon. So it's a great way to get ideas. So this is what I did is, and this is the, the methodology that I teach is that, Hey, look on Etsy to see if something's trendy. And what I saw when I did this, um, when I did this, uh, webinar was, wait a minute, look at all these like little slides or are these little like uh, shelves and, and, and stuff like that. So what I did was I actually ordered a bunch of these and then I was like, let me test it on Amazon. Is this really going to have some kind of uh success for these keywords on amazon because that's the thing that is important on amazon is you want to be able to validate your demand and yes if you've got a bunch of other sellers selling the same thing well that's validation you can see but there's as you guys saw on egg holder i don't know why amazon is not working here but there there was nothing there's nothing that looks like that here right so what I did was I ordered some, and you guys can see right here, I actually made a what we call a test listing, all right? Test listing that I was gonna do PPC on. So here's the actual test listing that I made. This is live. I mean, it's not live anymore, but I'm, I'm what I'm showing you guys is live. As you guys can see, it's unavailable. It's funny, I sold one and got a bad rating on it. <laughs> but anyways, as you can see, this Same is a song. terrible listing. Terrible listing. This is a, what's wrong with this image here? Is well, this a? Of yeah, first of all, it's not high quality. It's not on a white background. Yep. It's not branded well. And, and just to be clear, you you didn't with the Tesla and you didn't go source this. You didn't get a hundred units. You didn't you know pay a down payment and get this product uh, produced. You actually bought the products from Etsy. You're almost arbitraging it, a couple of them just to, so you could send them in and test it on Amazon. Exactly, exactly. So I purposely made a bad listing because it further validates it. So this is what you guys have to do if you find an idea on Etsy or Pinterest. If you can get a few samples from Etsy or maybe even from a supplier or whatever, like even like three, four samples is enough, throw up a bad listing, all right? Um, so I threw up a bad listing. There's not many bullet points here. It's pretty ugly. and But I made sure it's optimized for the keywords that I know I need to convert for. So like I was thinking that egg holder and egg shelf and egg tray, maybe buyers who are searching for that might like this. How do you test that? Well, I put this listing up. I made... Uh, using ads in Helium 10, I made three PPC campaigns. Um, let me see. I'm, I'm going to see if I can actually show you guys some of it. But I put a super high bid, 
so that I knew that I was coming uh, I was coming at the top of the uh, screen. I was coming up at the top of the screen, the top of the search results for some certain keywords. And then what am I looking for? All right, I'm looking for number one, are we getting impressions? So does just by having this listing, is Amazon at least going to think that I'm relevant enough uh, to, to, um, to show, all right? So is there impressions? Right. Number two, am I getting clicks? Because I, not only am I making a bad listing, but let me show you guys. I don't know if you guys saw here. Take a look at this uh, price I put it at. Uh, look at that. I put it at $80, 80 bucks, like an yeah, well. insane price. <laughs> I mean, what would you pay for this? I mean, yeah, probably 30 bucks, right? Yeah, exactly. Like 30 bucks. Maybe if I'm, you know, make it kind of like uh, differentiated sure, more and like fancy, yeah. maybe 40 max, mm -hmm. you know? So I put 80 because, again, I don't want it to be sold. What I'm looking for is I want to find clicks. And then if somebody is clicking on it at $80 with a terrible image, that gets me a little bit excited. It's like, wow, why would somebody click on this if it, there wasn't demand, if it, if it didn't, like, resonate with them? Secondly, the, the absolute uh, cream of the crop here of this test is if actually somebody purchases it. And sure enough, we sold out of these. We even sold, uh, like, three or four, and we even got a bad review because – I think the review said like, this is like price way too high. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at that. I have it on my kitchen wall, but, but the quality for the price is outrageous. And, and that's yeah. fine. I'm never going to use this right, listing right. again. This is a test listing. But I went through the process. Now it's like, this is valid. Like this is, going to have, uh, this is going to have demand on Amazon. So what I did, I sent one of these samples. I'm not going to copy it directly. You should never, guys, don't copy just other people directly, mm -hmm. but just so they have an idea of what this product is. And I changed the, the dimensions around and, and I kind of like looked at the reviews on Etsy, what people complained about of, of the other ones. You can't do that on Amazon. This doesn't exist on Amazon. And this is now in production. So guys, on the Project X account, you are going to see this product probably in about, I would say, two months or so. Um, and I think it's going to do quite well. So that's just one way to find your first product, low barrier of, barrier of entry, find something that's trending on Etsy and Pinterest, test if that demand is actually worth investing in, because this is only going to cost me maybe like five bucks a piece, but still you, I got to order 500. This is not, you know, 2,500 bucks plus shipping is not something to just scoff right. at, you know, that's, that's still a hefty investment. So I wanted to validate my, this demand since it doesn't exist on Amazon. And um, I think that's just a, a great formula to, to for your first product. That's really cool, Bradley. So I think you probably pricked a lot of people people's ears up when they heard, I can order five, 10 units, test something. I don't have to blow my budget and I could get market confirmation before I have to sell something. And that's something a lot of people aren't talking about, right? You hear about the 20, 40, $30,000 success stories, yeah. um, but maybe that seems unachievable to you. It seems too far away. Hey, I'm, I'm 19 and I have two thousand dollars that i saved working a part-time job I, I can't do that right you, this yeah. you can do this is really exciting this is really cool so the question that everyone surely wants to know now we got really good information on you first of all i'm super grateful for this and uh i was really almost getting goosebumps with the, some of the stuff you're talking about because it's such good information so go to pinterest go to etsy get external proof of concept for ideas that you may have see the ideas that are pushing ahead of what's on amazon currently but we know they're selling because you know they're ranked at the top of pinterest or they're ranked at the top of etsy now the question that is on everyone's mind is how do we find those ideas right can we go into yeah. your computer and uh take a look at how you would go about finding those ideas it's like okay you start with sure. the egg holder but for someone who doesn't know how do i go from nothing to egg holder or nothing to that first you know phrase that we could put into amazon absolutely and this is exactly what i did so i kind of skipped over that but what you want to do is uh, is go into product research. Uh, this is what I did for this exact one, how we found the egg holder. And I was looking under uh, keywords, all right? So I like to find keywords that that have demand. Um, and so like I, I'll put in something like, um, let's just say, hey, I'm looking for something that's searched for at least 2,000 times, maybe a max of 6,000. And let's just say, let me just choose a couple categories here. Home and kitchen is pretty hot right now. Anything with the home is like pretty hot right now. So and then let me pick office products maybe. And then I'm going to look for for things that maybe at least are not uh, yet that uh, that hot on Amazon or not that established. And so the right. thing that to me signifies how established something is, is the number of reviews. You know, you don't have a new product and it's going to get a thousand reviews. So, uh, you know, so, so if it's a newer niche, most of these products might have less than X number of reviews. So I'm going to put here 
let's just say 150. And basically that means that if I take the top products on the page, like, you know, top 20, top 30, whatever, and average out the number of reviews, it's less than 150. Because, yeah. you know, collagen peptides or something, or, or garlic press or something like that, all those things have thousands of reviews. That is not suggested for product research. So let me just show you guys what is an example that would come up here. And then we have here elephant shower curtain, right? So there's just different uh, strange things here. We got still a lot of Christmas things here. Uh, ornaments. So, you know, this is this is around Christmas time. So I'm going to see a lot of ornament words and Xmas and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do when I see that is I go into here to exclude. So I'm going to say I don't want to see anything that says ornaments in it or ornaments or Xmas or Christmas. Let me take away those uh, keywords here. Let's run that again. Let's take away some of those. All right, so we've got some here. German incense smoker. Like, what in the actual heck is that? Look at it. Here, here's a cool one. Ramen noodle bowl with chopsticks. I mean, that is a long tail keyword if I ever saw one. But guess what? 2,500 people a month are searching for it. Let's take a look at how this looks on Amazon. All right, let's do it. This is pretty cool. Look at this. Ramen noodle bowl with chopsticks. So even on Amazon itself, it's fairly new. It's fairly new because look at look at the top row here. Only 100 reviews, 100 reviews, 68 reviews. This this product here, this is not even FBA. Uh, I love seeing that. You know, like yes. it, that that's another sign of 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 a uh, potential here. Uh, mm -hmm. Not FBA. Let's see what else do we see. Look at this. This is page one, position four. This guy has only four reviews. All right. So what I could do here is I could even take it a step further. I can use that same methodology and I can go to uh, Pinterest right, right? and let's just do the same exact thing just to see, is this really the top one? Ramen bowl with chopstick. Look, I mean, it even comes up in autocomplete. So obviously sure people are searching this, this product on Pinterest. And then I can just see, is there some other kind of trend here as far as like, uh, like, the, like the one thing that's new to me, which it seems like it's already on Amazon is, I didn't think about having holes to stick the chopsticks in like that. Right. I've never had a bowl like that. So to me, that must be a new trend. So maybe five months ago, we wouldn't have seen that here, but I bet you we would have already seen it on Pinterest, which we, which we still do now. And this might be where these guys got the, uh, the idea from, but, but literally right there, we just went through that same process. So you start on black box, look for things that have search volume and then, now it's like, yeah, you, you could just double down and do the exact same thing or, or similar to what other people are doing. But then take that extra step and look off of Amazon and see maybe there's something that – oh, hold on. I, I got to show this to you. I just saw this out of the corner of my eye here. I was about to say maybe there's something that people are doing that's different than what's happening on, on, on Amazon. Look at this. This is a cool idea. All right. Let's see. To actually have like a little hat right here. Oh, yes. Like maybe. you see, so look for stuff like that. And then – Maybe this, there's nobody on Amazon who has that. And I'm not saying this is a great idea. It could be a bad idea. It could be a bad idea, but just order three or four from boxlunch.com, <laughs> throw it up on Amazon and see, like, is it, is that gonna, gonna resonate? You know, so that's the kind of things that you look for to kind of differentiate yourself from the existing sellers. All right, that's awesome. So we've covered a lot of ground today. First off, you know, using these external websites like Etsy and Pinterest, getting proof of concept from a very, very small test order um, and looking for these markets that are rather small to begin with, right? We don't have these huge sellers that we're competing against with a thousand reviews. We're actually specifically looking for products that have a search volume of only maybe a thousand or 1500 sure. to four or 5,000 and purposefully not looking at 15, 20, 30,000 yep. search volume. Not that that's wrong. And like you said at the beginning, if you have a really high budget and you've been doing this for longer, of course you might want to take a swing at some of those things. There's nothing wrong with yep. that either because the same thing will work. You go look for a trend that's ahead of Amazon and go do it with a massive budget. Those same principles are going to work for, you know, you guys watching this video who maybe have two, three, four thousand dollars to start a product in 2021. Maybe you just haven't taken that leap of faith yet. So I want to say thanks to you, Bradley. I want to be respectful of your time. Everything you shared with us today is top level knowledge um, that I'm sure you would have to uh, pay for elsewhere. So thank you so much. You were very gracious with what you were sharing. Um, it's always a joy to talk to you. Um, do you have any last tips and tricks for these 
uh, people who are watching right now who are thinking about starting Amazon in 2021, maybe didn't get to it in 2020. Uh, are you excited for 2021? Are you optimistic? What do you think the outcome of this year is going to look like? Because we've seen an evolution of what it means to be an Amazon seller. Uh, in the past year, it's been kind of crazy. Where do you see this all going and how do we enter? Yeah, I mean, it, it, 2020 for a lot of people, um, you know, as long as you weren't selling a product that was only for the travel industry or mm -hmm. something like that, you know, people saw some unprecedented sales. And the reason is because so many stores and things were closed and so many places were at lockdowns in different times of the year that people had no choice. Even the ones who didn't buy online before didn't, they always held out and getting an Amazon Prime account. Now they were almost forced to, to do it. Right, and what's right. happened is, is those sales haven't gone down that much. It's because all these people that weren't buying online before, now they did, you know, like maybe there are a lot of the older generation, like my parents' mm -hmm. generation or something like, ah, I'm, I just want to go to the store, the Walmart, you know, but sure. then now they, they had to do it. And they're like, holy crap, this is like pretty convenient. I just put, you know, push a couple buttons and in 24 hours or 40 hours, I got this product. Yeah, sure. Now I can go to the store, but no, nah, uh, this is a good thing. So we haven't seen the numbers go down that much is because people now are more used to buying online. So you're going to see that continue in 2021, even though, you know, probably the lockdowns I'm sure are going to be ending soon across the country, but you're going to see big numbers. So it's a great time. I'm super excited for anybody who's just starting to sell online because the, the opportunity is just incredible due to how many people are buying online. And you guys can see that too, from the, the uh, Amazon has so many restrictions in place now for sending inventory into Amazon because even though they have added almost 50% of overall square feet in their warehouses this year, which is we're talking millions of square foot, they're still packed to the gunnels because mm -hmm. there's so much business. The, the, their, their fulfillment network is stretched completely thin right now because still so many people are buying online and that should get you guys excited. Don't think that, oh, it's too late. I miss, I missed the boat on this thing. No, it is a great time to get on Amazon. I love it. Thank you so much, man. Uh, hopefully everyone watching this video uh, enjoyed listening to Bradley talk as much as I did. Be sure to leave a comment down below if you have any questions. I will be looking through there um, and I'm sure Bradley will be checking out this video once it goes up. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being on the uh, on the channel, Bradley. And I will be you. seeing you, uh, the viewer, in a video next time on the channel. Thanks so much, guys. Later. Hey, guys.